Hey guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Studio 700 at Revitalize Life Fitness and Life Coaching. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the body, the energy, and success you deserve? With no further ado, here's Coach Lou. Good Monday morning, guys. It is Coach Lou coming to you live here from Studio 700. Guess what today is? Today is the truth about protein baby. And this is one of those things that has been controversial and people have had the ups, downs, the goods, the bad, you need, you don't need, when, how much, what kind. And there has been continual arguments amongst the greatest of professionals and the greatest people when it comes to talking about protein. What kind, how much, when? Let me dispel some myths today for you. Let me give you some truths to go on and let's really dig into the truth about protein baby. So before we get started, I got to let you know that the statements on the show have not been uh, um, approved or researched by the FDA. You're using your own opinion when you come to this. I am not a medical doctor and I'm not giving you advice and this is not intended to cure, treat, or prevent any disease. Okay, with the disclaimer out of the way, what is the truth about protein? You know, you've heard so many different things about it over the years. It's good, it's bad, too much, too little, gram per body weight, uh, pound of body weight. You know, what is the real truth? Well, let's start off today with what do proteins do? What is the purpose of this P word? Protein's main purpose is to rebuild muscle and cell damage that you have during the day it's the building blocks of your your body basically and people say well what are amino acids amino acids are the little blocks in the proteins if it makes sense that maybe the amino acids would be the mortar between the blocks that actually makes it build for a building if you took a building and just stack blocks on top of each other to build it and there was nothing to hold it together and to create a strong structure, you'd be in trouble. That building would not be stable. So having a complete amino acid panel is like super important when it comes to your protein consumption. So they rebuild muscle and cell damage. So it's a venture to say we can understand why protein is so important to us and what it means. Now, there's a lot of talk about the essential amino acids versus the non-essential amino acids. And do these mean that the essentials are the ones you must have and the non-essentials are the ones that you don't really need, right? That would make sense? Eh, wrong. The difference is an essential amino acid must be consumed in your food. It must be taken in where a non-essential is made by the body. And you still get them in your foods and you still probably need more of them than the body necessarily produces, but that's the difference. When we talk about essential, it is the ones that you got to consume because your body doesn't make them. The non-essentials are the ones that are made in your body. So it's not essential that you consume them. So there's been a, a, a myth for a long time, a protein is a protein is a protein. You know, it doesn't matter. It's the same as some doctors will caringly tell you a fat is a fat is a fat, in that, you know, your macronutrients, your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, that it doesn't matter where the sources come from on that. We couldn't be further from true on that, guys, because we all know that you know a potato chip has x amount of carbs and a carrot has x amount of carbs but the carrot's much better for you especially if it's organic 
So you see where I'm going with this. And the same thing with proteins. You know, X amount of grams of protein a day is not the end all to be all just because it's a protein. You need enough protein, absolutely, but you don't need too much protein. And then we're going to get into that in just a minute. So understanding, again, first, first key takeaway today is essential is an amino acid that you have to supplement or consume into your body. Non-essentials are the ones your body already makes. So let's jump into the good proteins and why they're good. Uh, first protein I want to talk to you about is a plant-based protein. There's a, a big movement to going towards plant-based in today's society, and there's a lot of reason for that. Plant-based proteins, plant-based foods, uh, especially when they're organic, tend to be a lot better for our bodies. We're not overly designed for too much meat, although we can tolerate some of it. Um, we're definitely not designed for uh, yeast-raised breads and grains and um, you know produced grains and sugars, refined sugars. We are not designed to eat that, folks, and I'm going to go into a lot of reasons why as we go through our, our health series and our HEAL seminar. So, hemp being what I would consider one of the best plant-based proteins, it's high in protein, it's a complete protein, and it's also high in fiber and high in omegas. Those are the healthy fats. And it doesn't taste bad. So hemp protein gets almost my number one vote. Actually, it gets my number one vote all the way around because of flavor. It doesn't have a flavor that you may not like. My second favorite protein would be egg protein. The reason being here, again, it's a high level of protein for the volume. Um, egg protein is great whether you're talking whole eggs or whether you're talking uh, egg protein powder. When you're using eggs, eat the whole egg. You know, most people are like, oh, eat egg whites, eat egg whites. Very little nutrient in the egg white compared to the egg yellow. And I'm not ex suggesting excessive amounts of eggs being an animal product, um, you know, during the week. But, you know, there's a lot of studies that are also linking a lot of what's in the eggs to brain health, um, you know, a lot of the keto health. So there's a lot to be said for egg, and it's usually an awesome tasting uh, protein. Now, egg protein tends to be very, very tolerable to most people's digestive systems. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're allergic to eggs, it might not be the way to go, but egg protein has a, a really high vote on my part because it is very tolerable to the body, high in protein, tastes good, and has a full, complete amino acid panel to it. Another good source of protein is flax. Uh, flax can be really good because it's loaded with protein and omegas, and that is good. Um, excessive amounts of flax I wouldn't overly recommend because it has a slight, like soy, similar um, estrogen producing properties a lot less than soy but if you were to over consume flax you might find it fights you a little bit on you know muscle retention or if you have any issues where you don't want any more uh, estrogen in your body for health reasons uh, flax may not be the top notch but a little bit of flax in my book unless you have a health reason is uh, it's still a good protein Spirulina is an amazing complete protein, very high in protein, totally, uh, of course, vegetable protein. It's made from blue-green algae. It is very alkaline and very, very mineral-loaded. Uh, it's great, and I use it personally not only for the fact it's a great source of protein, but because it's such an alkalizer, it helps reduce a lot of the damage that the acids are doing to the body and neutralizes those acids and get it out. And my personal, one thing that I use it for personally, and I'm not going to uh, give you a, you know, again, I'm not going to claim to be a doctor here on this one, but one of the personal things I do it for is heartburn. Um, like in a 16 ounce bottle of water, if you pictured the end of a butter knife, like with your 
fingernail size, like about that big, and you did a little scoop like that in there and shook it up. Um, you're getting great, 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 great complete protein. It doesn't taste bad. It's got a little sweet taste to it. You would think it's going to taste like, oh my God, pond water. And it looks pretty green, but it doesn't taste bad. But I will tell you from my personal experience, if I have heartburn, my heartburn is gone in 30 seconds or less if I start drinking water with spirulina in it. That is much better than using these commercial nasty, miserably nasty, bad for you antacids or some of these over the counter, which used to be prescription drugs, which are linked to stomach cancers and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you're not going to have that issue with spirulina. So spirulina is an awesome protein for you. Way to go. Now, proteins to avoid. Whey is my number one avoid. The only good part of whey is it's a complete protein, but all milk-based products are hard on the digestive system. Even if you are a person that seems to tolerate them, they are still creating problems with your digestion. You hear a lot about the leaky gut syndrome. Well, whey products are one of the number one offenders in that. Um, most whey comes from commercially raised cows that are treated with hormones, steroids, antibiotics. Uh, they're in nasty, dirty condition. They're just not, we are not designed to drink another animal's milk. We are the only things on earth, and you're going to tell me that one time a kitten was raised by a raccoon or something, but in, in the way where God put us on this earth, in the way that Mother Nature is, we're not designed to drink another animal's milk, period. The only milk products that are very similar to human milk um, is uh, goat's milk. So you can get away with some of that if you want a little bit of milk, but stick to a, an almond milk, a coconut milk, something like that, and you're going to be oodles ahead when it comes to drinking that. But whey protein, there is nothing I can say good about it. It is a very dirty burning protein. It is the reason it's one of the number one selling proteins. It's the cheapest to produce. So even though it's less expensive on the shelves, it's way cheaper to produce. Their profit margin is way larger on a jug of whey protein than it is on egg protein or hemp. So, you know, what does that tell you right there? The way bigger profit margin, cheaper to bring to market. That's like the difference between Kobe beef and a McDonald's hamburger. If that gives you an analogy, there you go. So whey is my number one stay away from. Uh, pea, rice, and chia um, are okay proteins. And the fact that they're, they're, when you combine them, they're a complete protein. And they are plant-based. challenge I have is they can tend to come from high lectin foods. And if you've been with me a while and you've heard some of my talk on lectins, lectins are just simply the plant toxins, the plant protectives. You know, animals have teeth, claws, they have the ability to move, run, to defend themselves. Plants in, in trees and stuff like that don't. So a lot of them have these lectins, which are plant tox toxins. Over the years, we used to be way more tolerant of these, but now with all the extra pesticides and pollution, our body has, bodies have become more sensitive to these lectins, these plant toxins. So peas, grains, corn, tomatoes, nightshades are all loaded with lectins that have become very intolerable to humans. So these proteins aren't necessarily as good as we would love them to be. What about soy? Remember when soy was a craze? Save your heart with soy. Yeah, save your heart with soy, and it fuels, and again, not coming as a doctor, but from research, seems to fuel a lot of cancers, especially in men. Soy products are heavy inducers of uh, estrogen produ production in the body. They have estrogen-like properties in themselves. Soy is not a good choice, guys, and soy is in everything. Watch your labels, read your labels. 
Soy is not the place to get your protein and most certainly not to supplement your diet with soy in any way, manner, or form. So there you have it. That is pretty much the good list, the bad list. I'll give you some links here in the post when I get it done. I did not do a pre-training on this. The live is your training. So when you come back on the site, give me a few hours after the show. We'll get that posted up on the site and with some information, some links where you can get these proteins at great prices if you're adding them into your dietary. Um, when do you consume your proteins? Pretty much through the day. You don't want to have, you know, a big heavy protein at dinner. You don't want to eat that big fat steak because you're going to produce too much nitrogen in the body, which is actually going to make you sluggish. It's good to have some protein after a vigorous workout, you know, a nice protein shake or a, uh, you know, some spirulina, um, small piece of meat if you have to. If you're going to do meat, though, make sure it was organically raised, grass-fed, no antibiotics, no hormones, and get it from a trusted source. And let me tell you, a serving of meat is not a cowboy cut strip steak this big. Serving of meat, if you're going to choose to eat it, is about the size of the palm of your hand, if that. Uh, fish is a good source of protein. My only caveat with fish, so it is a good source of protein, a good source of omegas. Make sure it's wild caught. Um, the stuff that is usually farm raised is usually fed stuff like corn and soy which gets that into your system through the, the backdoor version of feeding your system. You don't even realize you're getting it from what the animal ate. But also keep a caution on how much fish you eat because even the wild-caught fish can have some heavy metals such as mercury and so forth. Uh, generally not tons if it's from way up in the Icelandic areas and so forth like the salmon caught over in uh, Iceland and stuff like that tends to be a little bit better than the stuff dragged out of the Atlantic. Just saying though, you know, keep you a limited amount of that, but it is a good protein. Um, other than that, I think this should give you a little bit of insight and get, you know, a study started. Get, you know, start studying it. Start really studying the different types of proteins, the pros, the cons, list them on a sheet. Decide, decide what you like, what is sustainable to do, but really keep off that avoid list. Stay away from those and go more towards the, the positive, healthier proteins and see if your body doesn't thank you for it. So we are tooling along here. Um, do want to make a quick announcement when it comes to scheduling, etc. And I'm pulling up our calendar right here. We were going to uh, broadcast and do our health, eating, and lifestyle on the 29th of this month. That's our health, eating, and lifestyle made simplified seminar. Um, due to some technical issues uh, with our getting our streaming system set up and so forth and scheduling right now, we have moved that to October 27th. Um, 1 to 5 p.m. That is a half-day seminar that gets into healthy eating, proper exercise, proper stress reduction and, and prevention, um, sleep study, hydration, proper breathing, and, you know, just a way to get this all put together and in a fun way. We have a good time with it. It's not going to be a, a sitting there going, okay, what you must do. We, we get playful. We'll have Q&A. Well, it's going to be live in the studio here as well as broadcast worldwide. So that's a great thing. Grab your seat. Um, not literally. <laughs> Grab your seat on there. You can go on the website and go on Health Eating and Lifestyle Seminar. Buy your ticket. Get ready to go, guys, because that is life-changing. The cool thing is that's going to hit right before Thanksgiving month and Christmas time. Let's make this the year that you don't get sick during the holidays. You know, all too often people end up sick and they blame these, you know, bugs that miraculously come from the Cuban flu or the Russian flu or the, you know, the European flu bug came over. When in all reality, those bugs are always around us. And don't get me wrong, there are germs, there are viruses. And they're always in your body and around your body. But when your body goes into pollution mode, 
they take over. It, a, a great analogy, as I've heard it put, you know, when the garbage strikes were in New York City, you know, when people, garbage was piling up all over the streets and that, and there were rats everywhere, you know, and it was disgusting. You know, trying to say that the rats brought the garbage or the germs bring the illness would be kind of preposterous when we all know if the streets weren't polluted with garbage or our bodies weren't polluted with garbage, the rats probably wouldn't come and they wouldn't take over. They'd be like, hey, there's not enough to eat here. I can't survive in this environment. I'm going somewhere else. So look at that analogy to be the case for the holidays. Let's keep you healthy, strong, safe through the holidays and get into 2020 and make that the best year ever yet. And then we're going to build upon that and build upon that and build upon that as each year comes up. We got a chance to finish 2019 really strong and get set up and ready to go for this big year coming up. So I encourage you to live with faith, energy, passion, and always live your dreams, guys. I really from, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, hope that this helps you debug some of the myths about proteins and get some reality about that. One last thing before I go, um, there's always been a uh, concept of one gram of protein per day per you know pound of body weight. You know, that would put me at 170 some grams of protein a day. That is a lot. Now bodybuilders are going to need a little bit more. And yes, I'm very active, etc. But I am not bodybuilding to bam and blow up like Arnold as opposed to being strong, lean, fast, and energetic. Eating that much protein would put that much more nitrogen in your body, which is going to slow you up. It's going to be like running in mud. So, in which we like to do, by the way. Uh, but we like to run quickly through the mud. So, anyway... Find your protein number. I would say, you know, 30 to 60% of your body weight in grams, you know, grams per pound would be a much better for the average person. A little bit lower if you're less active. If you're more active and you're, you're doing a lot of work or a lot of workouts, you'll definitely want to bump up that protein a little because you want to get that muscle growth. So find your level on that, where it's enough protein, where you're not wasting, where you don't feel like I'm doing all this work and I'm not gaining any muscle, or worse yet, I'm gaining fat from my workouts, or you know, it's, I'm going in the wrong direction. That means you're burning up too much muscle during your workout. That can be over cardio, but we're gonna talk about that another day. Um, and not to the point where you feel sluggish, you're, you're gaining muscle, but you feel like you're a big muscular slug, that doesn't help either. So let's step it up, guys. Again, live with it. faith, energy, passion. Always live your dreams. This is Coach Lou. Um, the full post will be up in a couple hours with some links to some good proteins and the best places to get them. So step up, guys. Let's rock. Get signed up. I'm going to get the uh, things changed over on the site. You can still sign up. If you sign up for the uh, seminar, just understand it will be for the 27th of October. It's going to be a big day. This is going to be our big premiere of the, the revised, redone, in-depth, half-day seminar of how to live your health, eating, and lifestyle. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me this Monday morning, and make this week a masterpiece.